What's going on, man? Welcome back to the basement. I'm Ron, and today we're going to talk through my top 10 starts and stats for week two of the fantasy football season. This is a video we're going to do every Friday where I give you guys 10 players I'm higher on than the Fantasy Pros consensus rankings and then give you one stat as to why that is the case. Some of these guys are high-end wide receiver twos, flex plays. Others are complete fringe long shots. These are for people, you know, whether you are down horrendous playing DFS, whether you have a tough lineup decision for your RB2 or like your wide receiver three, it should help you guys across the board and should just be good in general to kind of preview the week ahead here. So with all that being said, if you enjoy, leave a like, subscribe, let's go. Now, first up, we have Tank Dell. We're going to start, you know, pretty high up here. Uh, Tank Dell is the wide receiver 30 by consensus. He is my wide receiver 23 this week. He's at home versus Chicago. And pretty much the format for this video is I have a stat here. I'm going to read it to you guys. I'll kind of talk through what my, my mindset is with this player this week, and then we'll go from there. So with Tank Dell... He had the second most expected points among Texans wide receivers last week at 14.7 despite finishing with just 8.9 PPR points. He should get back on track this week with Nico Collins getting a lot of attention from Bears cornerback Jalen Johnson. So expected points is based on your average depth of target, your red zone targets, all of that. How many points should you have put up? He should have had a pretty good week last week with 14.7. He did not get there, of course. He what? Fell short of that by like minus 5.8. This is a screenshot from Rotoviz. By the way, I took all of these stats from PFF, uh, Fantasy Life Utilization Reports, another one, Fantasy Points, Hayden Winks over at Underdog, of course, and Rotoviz. This is a chart from Rotoviz here. Tank Dell actually had more expected points than Nico Collins. He just couldn't get there on the day. Again, I think this is kind of not, not a squeaky wheel scenario for Tank Dell, but a spot where he can bounce back. The volume was there. To me, he's still a top 24 play this week. Now, our second player here is going to be Najee Harris. He is my RB22 this week. He's on the road. He's in Denver. I'm three spots higher than consensus. That's what that plus three is here. And the stat is the Broncos allowed the six most fantasy points to running backs in week one, along with 2.01 adjusted yards before contact per attempt. That was the third highest in the NFL in week one. He's coming off 20 carries and Najee Harris should be leaned on again versus the Broncos. This time you should see better results. Atlanta, who we played last year, allowed the fourth fewest fantasy points to running backs. This is a team that is actually really good on defense, the Atlanta Falcons. I think it was also a little bit tougher where Justin Fields didn't get the start until later on in the week, and it kind of hindered their offense a little bit. But on the road versus Denver, who just like Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet run all over them, I think that Najee Harris is going to be in a really nice spot here. Just give you a nice, solid RB2 output have about 15 to 20 touches, and that's really all you can ask for at this point in time in fantasy football. Our third start here is Devin Singletary. He's my RB25. He's consensus RB28, so we're three spots higher than consensus. He's on the road versus Washington, and in his last eight games with Brian Dable, so that was weeks 14 through 20, which is like some playoff weeks in 2022, and then week one of 2024, he has had a 70% or better snap share in every single game, and he's averaged 18.4 opportunities per game. He had 15 last week in a brutal game script, right, where the Giants got absolutely blown out. Now he gets a nice matchup. He's going against the Commanders, who allowed the fourth most adjusted yards before contact last week and the sixth most points to running backs in 2023. So adjusted yards before contact, that is just a stat where it's how much yardage is the defense get, giving you before you're even getting touched. The Commanders were not penetrating Tampa's offensive line whatsoever. So it should be wide running lanes. It should be a lot of targets and dump offs for Singletary. I have him as like a fringe RB2 this week. Now, in that same game, I do want to talk about Daniel Jones. This is actually kind of a game environment I want to be targeting. Uh, this Giants versus Washington game. There should be a lot of points. They both run up tempo. And I do actually like, if you're in a spot where let's say you lost Jordan Love or you lost, uh, or I don't know, maybe you're not trusting Caleb Williams or you drafted some quarterback that, you know, maybe Deshaun Watson or something or somebody among those lines that you now can no longer trust to be your quarterback. Daniel Jones is my desperation start this week. He's my QB 17. He's on the road versus Washington. That's four spots higher than consensus here. 
and he had the fifth most designed rushes with four last week. That was the same amount as Josh Allen. It was more than Anthony Richardson, and it was more than Kyler Murray. Design rushes are just non-scramble, so that's just your, all right, Dable's in the headset drawing up a quarterback sweep or quarterback power, and it's legitimately a running play for the quarterback. So that's playing the designs. Of course, you're not going to get those for guys like Kirk Cousins and Aaron Rodgers. Now, this should provide a rushing floor, and he gets a light match versus the Washington Commanders, who have allowed the second most fantasy points to quarterbacks dating back to last season. It's a good in game environment, too, as the Giants were the eighth fastest team last week, and Washington led the league in no huddle rate. The Giants are projected to score the 20th most points this week. So, weirdly, this is kind of a garbage fire matchup where you have, of course, you have like two mid offenses, but they both want to play fast, and they're both going up against. You know, the Giants' defense is good on paper. The Washington defense, of course, is awful. There should be enough tempo, enough plays, enough chaos, right, where, like, there might be, like, a pick six or a fumble. There's going to be a lot going on in this game, and that should lead to fantasy points. And I do just think we just saw Washington get absolutely killed by Baker Mayfield and Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. I do think Daniel Jones, with his rushing floor, with how bad this defense is, should be able to give you at least a quarterback to finish this week. Now, the last player we're going to talk about from this game, our fifth start here, is Austin Eckler. Now, he's my RB31. He's at home versus the Giants this week. That's only one spot ahead of consensus. I will say the rest of these plays are much higher than consensus, but I guess consensus is just on Austin Eckler this week, but I still want to put him here as a guy like if you drafted him in a hero RB build or a zero RB build, I think you do got to put him in the lineup this week. The commanders are projected for the 14th most points by Vegas, ahead of the Bengals, Colts, Chargers, Vikings, and Bears. This is only going to happen versus the Giants. So if you have Washington players, this is the time to take advantage in this game environment. And Austin Eckler last week had a 3-plus yards per out run on four catches for 52 receiving yards. He only hit three or more yards per out run once last season. Is it a small sample? Sure. But just showing efficiency on any level is good for a player that is on washed watch like Austin Eckler is, and with Dexter Lawrence plugging up the middle, he is one of the best nose tackles in the NFL, it wouldn't be crazy to see Austin Eckler get some red zone looks out wide, you know, in the screen game, reverses, just getting stuff on the perimeter away from Dexter Lawrence in the middle. The Giants allowed the eighth most points to running backs last year in fantasy football, so it wouldn't shock me if this was an Eckler game instead of a Brian Robinson game. I know that the Washington Commanders are somehow favorites in this game, I actually kind of like Dable and the Giants to win and for the Commanders have to play really up-tempo, come from behind, have some two-minute drill drives with Austin Eckler, and that could be really nice. Four catches, 52 yards, and like about 10 PPR points last week for Austin Eckler. We could see something similar here again. Now, my sixth start is actually Brandon Cooks. He is the wide receiver 38 for me at home versus New Orleans. I'm six spots higher than consensus. Consensus has him as like wide receiver 44, which to me is just, I wouldn't call it disrespectful, but Brandon Cooks, he's interesting. He's actually projected within five yards of consensus top 30 wide receivers, Zay Flowers and Terry McLaurin, over on Underdog this week. Of course, make sure you check out Underdog Fantasy. They are the best. Use promo code ROM. They'll match your first deposit up to $1,000. I have links in the description and the comment section down below that'll take you straight there and use my promo code. But you can hop on the Pick'em, mess around with this. I actually thought it was pretty crazy how high... Brandon Cooks is, you know, I know Zay Flowers is a low eight dot high catch guy. Terry McLaurin is very much not that. Brandon Cooks, I mean, it's pretty crazy. 47 and a half receiving yards compared to McLaurin's 51 and a half. He's right there. Again, he's a very much a fine flex play this week, Brandon Cooks. And I will say, you can use this video, of course, for your lineups, your start sits. You can use it for DFS. You can use it for underdog pickums here, where you can take the hires on the players that I'm higher on in this video. But with Brandon Cooks, he was the wide receiver 21 last week. He had 14.5 PPR points, and the Cowboys are projected for the third most points this week at home versus a Saints defense without Marshawn Lattimore. I think that CeeDee Lamb is in a blow-up spot as well, but Brandon Cooks could be as well. The Saints defensive line is usually really good, so this could be a good game environment for Brandon Cooks, who, who somehow had a really good game versus the Browns defense last week. So Brandon Cooks, I don't know. He might be he he's given me early vibes of like this year's Adam Thielen, where he's just a veteran receiver that is a fringe top twenty four guy every week. You know, from now until like week ten, and things start to like break down, or when Ferguson comes back or whatever. But that's another big thing. Without Jake Ferguson, Brandon Cooks is second in line for targets on this team. Then our seventh start. Let's talk about JSN. 
All right, this is somebody that you drafted highly. You're probably in a position. I'm in a position where I have to start him in a couple places this week, but I wouldn't be all that spooked, right? I'll, I'll be honest. It does not feel good to put JSN in your flex spot, but here's why I'm five spots higher than consensus on JSN this week. The Patriots used man coverage 45.1% of the time in week one. That was the second most. Last season, JSN had 0.97 yards per out run on a 5.2 ADOT versus zone but a 1.92 yards per out run on a 9.2 ADOT versus man coverage, racking up 236 receiving yards versus man to Lockett's 141. You can see this across the bottom here, where against man coverage, that was actually where JSN shined last year. Now, the Patriots cornerback one, Christian Gonzalez, he shadowed Jamar Chase for 60% of his routes, holding him to 6.5 fantasy points on those routes. DK Metcalf should get similar treatment this week, which would open up JSN. JSN is coming off a down game, but he played a career high, 89% of the routes and has potential to bounce back as a flex option. So I like the matchup. It's not the prettiest matchup, but if you get shadow coverage on Metcalf, this could be the game. I know that Lockett was the featured guy last week where he had the most receptions and most targets, uh, despite not playing that many routes, but versus man, that has been JSN and Metcalf in this offense over the last two years. Lockett has become much more of a zone-beating specialist like he was against the Broncos last week. I have to say who they play, but yeah, it was the Broncos last week. Um, so this could be the matchup where JSN actually shines, but we shall see. Now, this is where we get deep. Like, we're going to get deeper as we go here. This is DFS. This is like a 14-team, uh, three wide receiver, one flex. But if you're really down bad, and I have one high-stakes managed team that I've streamed on the channel before. Where I'm actually starting AD Mitchell. It's not a terrible team. It's just weak at receiver. Like, I have Jordan Mason in the flex. That's how good it is at running back. But my wide receiver three this week is A.D. Mitchell. And I'm actually not that squeamish to fire him up. He is my wide receiver 52. He's on the road versus Green Bay. I'm four spots higher than consensus. And this is why. Anthony Richardson overthrew A.D. Mitchell for touchdowns twice last week. But him getting open and commanding targets is the key takeaway. He was first in separation and win rate last week on fantasy points, which is what you can see to the right over here, uh, average separ separation score, uh, win rate, all of that. He was a monster. He faces the Packers this week, who are outside the top 20 defenses in pass defense efficiency, which is pass EPA per play, and explosive pass percentage allowed. If you need a long shot flex play, I like A.D. Mitchell, right? He was getting open downfield. He was getting open on broken plays. Richardson just couldn't connect with him, but the Packers showed uh, versus the Eagles, that they could be susceptible to the big plays. And if someone's going to be a big play receiver on this Colts team, I like betting on the rookie, A.D. Mitchell. I'm not much of a film guy, but I absolutely love the QB score. Like, I watch all of his breakdowns on quarterbacks that I half care about. So I watched the Richardson one, and he even pointed it out, uh, JT over there at the QB school. A.D. Mitchell was just getting open at will. Like, just all over the field, running at corners, hitting double moves, getting open downfield. And all you need is for Richardson to connect a couple times. They were even using A.D. Mitchell in like cheap motion and stuff too. As long as Josh Downs isn't in the mix, which he isn't this week, A.D. Mitchell to me, startable is a stretch, but I think he's flexible in deeper leagues, right? Wide receiver 52 here, four spots higher than consensus. Then our ninth start is Tyler Johnson. He is my wide receiver 55 this week. He's on the road versus Arizona in a really good environment here, right? Rams versus Cardinals in a dome. It should be a high-scoring affair here. And Tyler Johnson, he's my wide receiver 55, 15 spots higher than consensus here. And the Rams had 53.9 expected points to the wide receiver position last year, according to Hayden Wink's usage model, which was, or no, last week. I think I said last year, but this was last week. 14.8 more than any other team in week one. The Cardinals ran the seventh most man coverage in week one. Cooper Cup had just four catches versus man coverage in week one, which you guys know he had like, you know, 21 targets, 14 catches. Most of his work came from settling in uh, soft zones, which is where Cooper Cup makes his bread and, uh, you know, his money, his bread and butter, whatever. This could be a spot where Tyler Johnson breaks out versus man coverage. He popped off for five catches, 79 yards last week. We could see something similar again versus a Cardinals team that is very much man coverage oriented and very much a team that is going to be soft and easy to exploit in the passing game. So Tyler Johnson, not bad at all. He was the guy who filled in once Puka came out, and people sort of believe that Tyler Johnson could inherit the Puka role instead of Demarcus Robinson making Tyler Johnson someone that you certainly can flex. And I will be honest, hands up, 
you know, these high stakes leagues that we do stream, right? They're like three wide receiver, one flex, very deep, 20 round drafts. I do have a spot where I lost Puka Nakua, super desperate in terms of finding a flex spot. Tyler Johnson is going in the flex spot for me as well. And then our 10th start here, this is a deep one, but I like Hayden Hurst a lot this week. He's my tight end 18. He's going to be on the road versus Carolina. I'm 16 spots higher than consensus. And this is because the Panthers ran zone coverage 81.8% of the time, the sixth most in week one. Hayden Hurst ran 79% of the routes in week one, tied for the 11th most among tight ends, and is a zone specialist. In week one, he was fifth among tight ends in receiving yards versus zone. 143 of his 184 receiving yards versus zone came last year when he was on the Panthers. So he had 184 receiving yards total. 143 of them came versus zone last season when he was on the Panthers. Also the year before that when he was on the Bengals and he had like 500 receiving yards. He had the third highest graded receiving grade on PFF against zone among tight ends behind just Travis Kelsey and Pat Fryermuth. So he's very good versus the zone. The Panthers are going to be running a ton of zone coverage here. And this is also a revenge game where Hayden Hurst used to play on the Panthers, now playing versus them this time. I'm just saying it all lines up where if you had, uh, I'm trying to think if you had uh, Ferguson or Njoku and you're in a deep league and everyone took Colby Parkinson and everyone took Hunter Henry and Tyler Conklin and you're just down to scraps, Hayden Hurst, I think, is worth a look in that setup. I also did have this graphic. You can see here, this is from last week. He was one of seven tight ends last week to have 30 or more receiving yards versus zone coverage. And I will say, just to put something in the back of your head, fellas, uh, Brock Bowers is one to watch. 50 receiving yards versus zone last week. He only had one catch versus man. Sadly, this week they play the Ravens, who run man coverage at a really high rate. But next time the Raiders face zone coverage, that is going to be the week where Bowers explodes. He is very good versus zone, as we saw in week one. But... That is going to do it for us today. That is 10 starts and stats for week two of the fantasy football season. I'm curious how you guys feel about that format. I'll be honest, the like breaking down, okay, here's my top 40 running backs and I go through every single matchup. It's just a lot for me. You guys know I like to go in depth. Like I'm telling you guys about the zone coverage of the Carolina Panthers and talking through Hayden Hurst. I don't know. Me personally, I prefer doing this kind of stuff than telling you, you know, here's why you should start Jerome Ford versus Chuba Hubbard and you know, go into the game environments and, you know, this is why my RB23 versus RB24. So I don't know. This to me is more enjoyable for me. Um, and I also think that it's, you know, I you, if you have the RB20, you're probably starting him anyways. You know what I mean? So I think this is going to help with flex decisions. I think it's going to help with RB2 decisions, especially in your hero RB builds and zero RB builds. And I think it's also going to help as we get through the season and players get injured and we get bye weeks and then you start to really start going, you know, dumpster diving on waiver wire, and this can help you out. So let me know how, how you guys felt about the or felt about this video. Um, again, it should help you for your lineups. It should help you for DFS. It should help you for underdog pickums. all of that good stuff. If you want my entire rankings, I give out my rankings every single week over on the Patreon, patreon.com slash Ron Stewart. You get my rankings, my rest of season rankings, my waiver wire article every week. You get my one-on-one trade advice in the higher up tiers, all of that good stuff, patreon.com slash Ron Stewart. You can find it below in the comments and the description. And I will say again, shout out to uh, Fantasy Points, shout out to PFF, Fantasy Life, Hayden Winks over at Underdog, um, and Rotoviz for the data. As always, love y'all, and I will see you in the next one. Like this froze, ice cold, oh oh